part of the longest in this room is part of the trust, I guess. So it's safe to say as well. Yeah, I'm um, a, uh, I, I, I'm happy to write for it. I'm glad I'm here. And I really miss Potter because I've been talking to him since we were teenagers. You know, I met him. Um, we both uh, got uh, top ranked in the entrance examinations of the uh, IIT uh, J. And um, we both used to take this correspondence course by uh, you know, prepare to prep for the exam. And they, uh, they gave us an award. So we went to Delhi. And we were waiting in queue backstage to get this award. So we were talking. Um, so we've been, we've been talking, we haven't really written papers together much at this point, but we've talked a lot since then. Uh, I reconnected with him when I was a graduate student at Harvard and uh, he was at MIT. Uh, we did some polit uh, political organization. Uh, I think you may remember there was the Bobby Masjid incident and we raised money for uh, the riots back in India. <coughs> and uh, in parallel, we, you know, kind of started talking science and that really crystallized when I went to Bell and bought home to Bell. And uh, <laughs> I was listening to your description of the speech recognition. I, I, I remember you know, endless dinner, lunch conversations and talked for like hours and hours complaining about speech recognition in the state of you know, non-research and so on and so forth. And, um, so that, that was sort of a one little piece of uh, work together. We never really uh, I kind of drifted off as a bird song and uh, season uh, human speech. Um, there's a few people who uh, I can call up and uh, uh, speak to um, sort of the you know, uh, living library. So as it were, now I'm missing a major volume from my uh, <laughs> living library in um, And I, I think uh, uh, what I some of the remarkable things about uh, him that I'm sure you know is clarity of thought, right? Precise. Um, and especially in neuroscience, where it's a bit of a strong theoretical neuroscience, and people can't really distinguish uh, uh, what is a regression and what is a scientific model. But some people can. So, so we, we had lots of uh, support group like therapy sessions, talking to the situation, and they were not crazy that you know, if the majority of people going in a direction that isn't quite right, it's still not quite right. And uh, so I, uh, you know, I, I think that was one of the very um, remarkable uh, things about uh, uh, so, um And uh, he liked to do classical music, and did I, I remember going in his car, and you know, listening to music, and he's singing. Probably don't think of him as a musician, but um, actually had a, a, quite a, a fairly good humming voice. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he might be enjoying the, uh, the music. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that uh, scientific uh, work aside, you know, just a, a wonderful uh, human being. Um, and I remember, so, so uh, we actually started some various threads of work together that I was hoping we would complete. Um, I will share a bit of that with you when I'm speaking. Um, but uh, I, I think that having known him and, and worked with him really had an important influence on my own uh, career and trajectory. So and I'm sure that's true for a lot of you. And I guess in this way, uh, his work will continue. And, you know, perhaps the, this conference is sort of uh, um,
I think there's been a generational shift, perhaps, in India in the Gandhi generation, generation. And uh, I was also listening with interest to how you describe this childhood day. Because I, I feel that part uh, uh, belongs to a, a generation of people which still was imbued with the Gandhi of that. And I, I think today maybe that's coming back a little, but uh, it's, it's not entirely clear. But that part of what also uh, made it special, and you may not quite realize it or, or connect to it, but there is also that sort of consciousness about the general good. Uh, statements you read from uh, Terence Paul, who is the uh, uh, founder of the English Search Foundation. He said that Parker was one of the first people they talked to when uh, he asked about joining the Lean Research Foundation's uh, Scientific Advisory Board in 2003. He said he did an internet search and found Parker very quickly using terms like automatic speech recognition. He scanned his video and immediately called it. And then he says, I had one of the most thrilling conversations I've ever had, 90 minutes long. Uh, Parker asked in, uh, encouraging questions and understood very well what was going on uh, with the plan that, uh, that Terry had. He said he was reflective, encouraging, approachable, deserved, soft-spoken, soft-spoken, and smart. And uh, he agreed to be on the Senate Advisory Board. He, of course, made very important contributions and immediate friends, both with the other board members and those working at the foundation, and all of us here miss him very much. Uh, so he did in a very short period of time, in 2004, uh, and thereafter, make some very good friends at the Lean Research Foundation. I don't think I saw him more than maybe a dozen times. Um, but uh, I consider Pontar um, to be one of the best friends I ever had. Um, and you know, it wasn't only his intellect, although his intellect was magnificent, that impressed me. I was I think I was even more taken by uh, things like his respectfulness. Uh, he, he would listen to conversations that we had around the table, uh, just sort of brainstorming boisterous conversations, trying to figure out where, where things were going to go in the research foundation. And he would normally be very kind of quiet. And I would often have this sensation of impatience, you know, of wanting to say what I thought might be best to do, and this sort of thing. Parker would just be silent and quiet through most of those things. And I, I would find uh, that whenever he did make any comment, he was always finding a grain of truth um, and some value in the contributions of everyone that spoke. Uh, he, um, it, it, this kind of respectfulness was just quite rare in my experience. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone who had that ability to see through the molass uh, to, the, to the nut of, of value in what everyone had to contrib contribute. He was graceful, and he was patient. And if there's anything I miss about it, it's that. Hello everyone, I am Irina Matviva, I was a PhD student in Sparta, and uh, I guess um, I may be, my background is probably different from most people in this room, so I come from a, a linguistics background, and my major area of interest is natural language processing. And I guess one I'm example of how Parsa was interested in many more areas than maybe like math and statistics. I know there are many papers and talks and citations about his contributions in those, those areas. But I would like to talk about like much broader perspective he has on the world. And he was very interested in language in particular. And uh, when I came here, Regina Livao also joined the department. And she was also working on information retrieval. And he was very supportive. And he actually always talked and asked me about linguistics problems not only language evolution, but like more linguistics, information retrieval, text processing. And he was trying to find some bridges between his area of research and those areas of research. And uh, I think for me, what was important, and I think what I learned kind of was the major uh, 
thing I learned from him was to really go to the very basics and to ask questions and to see how different areas of sciences might be connected. I remember in many talks at our department, uh, there was one of the, I guess, process what I remember from him is that uh, somebody will give a talk and will go maybe to the last slide of the presentation and show a table with nice results. And people will be asking maybe questions about those results. And Parsa will raise his hand and say, can you please go back to the very first slide? And really question the fundamental assumptions of all those results and theories and so on. And if those assumptions were not quite correct or didn't quite make sense, he would not be impressed by the results in the last table. And I think this is one of the really fundamental kind of approaches to the science. He was teaching his students, me in particular, and that helped me to, you know, find the topic for my thesis. And now I'm co-chairing the text crafts workshop, and this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to say many people in uh, natural language processing are now using graph-based techniques, and we are just trying to ask a very simple question: Why? What are the properties of graphs which, you know, make those techniques work or may not work, and so on? And I know I was teaching assistant uh, for Barca for a couple of uh, quarters, and I know he taught the same thing to his undergrad students. And so but the way kind of I think about it, this Barca's influence is much wider and broader than citations, or maybe even conferences his own, and just the whole approach. But he taught graduate students like me, even from different areas of research, and undergrad students who may never be even in research his influence of this clarity of thinking and of asking some of questions will be kind of, you know, everywhere <laughs> or in many different areas as well. So I'm Evadu and I'm, I was the director of the graduate program at the CS department uh, for June and that's the capacity in which I got to make part of it. But he had, uh, Morgan and Ogden had offices that were just down the hall from mine. And so far I had to go past my office to get to them. And often he would, if I was sitting there, sort of just, you know, gazing in his face, he'd come in and he'd sit down. And, and you know, there was no short conversation with Martha. Um, but I adored Martha. And I feel very lucky. Very first. Uh, I don't know if I told this to Misha, 
um, um, probably I did, but uh, one day uh, Arthur came by, my office was not too far from his, and uh, maybe she just wanted to check on my progress on our joint project, but uh, uh, on a, somewhere on my big desk there was a paper by David Mumford, uh, Anne Lee, and uh, Kim Pedersen on uh, statistical analysis of uh, local patches from uh, natural images. So there's this very uh, accurate, uh, very uh, detailed approach of doing uh, statistics on manifolds, even though not highly dimensional, high dimensional. But um, so Bart asked me, oh, what do you know about this? I said, well, I've been also doing something with natural images. and. Uh, um, I don't remember him actually taking this paper from me. Maybe he, uh, okay. But next thing I remember, a month or two later, uh, Mish and him were already actively working on uh, <laughs> uh, learning. And uh, uh, so, um, uh, so this spontaneity of, uh, of picking up something new and uh, immediately developing it to, um, uh, well, with the uh, massive speed and uh, that clarity uh, was really uh, uh, impressive. And also, yeah, some people mentioned before that uh, he would uh, be able to filter through all this noise. You know, obviously, it's, uh, it's important to be excited about things when, when we learn. But I think a great obstacle to learning is, is noise, and people become critical of other people's uh, approaches and, uh, and all this noise, I think, uh, actually inhibits our ability to understand each other. And it was really remarkable how uh, Arthur would actually be very quiet and not, not pay much attention to all those things. So uh, this overwhelming uh, sensation of peace uh, in his presence would uh, uh, stay with me for all these years. And, uh, very uh, grateful that I got to know him. Thank you. Anyone else? Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> so I'm extremely fortunate to have been uh, part of the uh, school from 2001 to 2007. And uh, thanks to Parvati, I had the opportunity to meet Partha just a couple of days before he passed away. And uh, in his memory, I then uh, I felt compared with an urge to write some words that I'd like to share with you. I first contacted Partha as an undergraduate student in engineering physics more than 10 years ago. I had developed an interest in machine learning and other areas that overlap with the streams of research. I spoke on phone and discussed why statistics, neuroscience, computer science, physics all made sense as possible career paths, but perhaps computer science would offer the right degree of breadth and exposure for the interests I had. He talked of natural computation or the scientific phenomena. Little did I know at the time this was typical of part. He identified as someone studying real scientific phenomena that lend, it, lend itself to what he called different modes of inquiry. Academic boundaries did not matter to him. Perhaps that's why he could make pro profound contributions to seemingly distinct disciplines from language learning, and evolution to automatic speech recognition to machine learning and statistics. Those who know, knew him well uh, knew that he always had a thread tying many distinct areas together in rather unique and unobvious ways. Uh, in his talks, he would bring manifold learning alive with two models of uh, vocal tracks. Uh, he would think of language learning as a phenomenon whose study naturally uh, led to questions around uh, the mathematical theory and computational mechanisms of generalization. Uh, so now thinking over the last uh, 10 years, I mean, to have been Partha's student uh, is a matter of deep pride for me. It was also a privilege. A few advisors would provide the quality of time, uh, training, freedom and guidance, knowledge and perspective as he did. Uh, a typical day uh, would look like the following. Uh, you would step out of the grad student's office in Ryerson to get a drink at the fountain in the main hall. You would then peek at Partha's office and sense a rush of enthusiasm if the lights were on. 
uh, almost always a knock would be welcomed with an invitation to talk. Four hours later, his blackboard would have changed symbols. Several papers would have been downloaded on his desktop, and some quick and some slow judgments would have been made on their contributions. Almost certainly, you would have been asked to think about why asking the right questions is perhaps more important than successfully answering wrong ones, uh, and why character is the most important quality of a researcher. Uh, fortunately, I also connected with Martha through squash, uh, although he's more known for his cricket skills. Uh, our academic meetings would get over and often be followed by a squash game and team games, the research would continue, papers would be discussed. So Partha saw and understood things differently. He often took strong positions and was articulate about them in public. There was intense clarity in his thinking as he would slowly construct a logical argument, not dismissing any important detail and yet never losing the big picture. Writing papers with him was an absolute pleasure uh, to help students begin to understand the significance of their own work develop taste for important research directions is in some sense the primary role of an advisor. Arthur truly existed, uh, excelled at this. Uh, in hindsight, spread over six years and more. Arthur shaped me as a researcher in more ways than I, than I can describe. Uh, and I will miss Arthur's education guidance.